Bonjour, this is Fabulously Delicious, the French food podcast. This is the podcast that's all about the cuisine that is said to have founded modern cooking. French ingredients and dishes have been the starting block for many of the world's best chefs and cooks. And on Fabulously Delicious, you'll learn all about those dishes and ingredients, as well as get to know more about fabulous French foodies. I'm your host, Andrew Pryor. Enchanté. Enchanté. My life changed when I competed on MasterChef Australia, and now I'm living my best life right here in the French countryside. Cooking, eating, meeting wonderful locals, food producers, home cooks, chefs, drinking amazing wines, eating some of the over, would you believe there's more than 1,500 French cheeses? I'm trying to eat them all for you. And in share these fabulous experiences with you, my fabulously delicious audience. I hope you're enjoying them. Today, we're diving into the rich and indulgent world of chocolate, a beloved treat that has captivated the hearts and the palates of people around the globe, especially here in France. As we celebrate the start of the Salon de Chocolat in Paris, the largest chocolate expo in Europe, we'll explore the fascinating history of chocolate in France, from its ancient origins to its transformation into an exquisite perfection we cherish today. Join us as we uncover the stories of pioneering chocolatiers, the evolution of chocolate making techniques, and the unique flavours that make French chocolate truly exceptional. Sit back, turn up the volume. If you're not driving, pour yourself a glass of wine, break a baguette, add a bit of saucisson maybe, some of that delicious cheese, and enjoy today's episode of Fabulously Delicious. Scrap that. I think you should. Sit back, turn the volume up. If you're not driving, pour yourself a glass of wine. Break open a box of chocolates, preferably French ones if you have them, and enjoy today's episode of Fabulously Delicious. Chocolate in France. Rich history. Chocolate is pronounced chocolat in France and spelt C-H-O-C-O-L-A-T. So basically, they dropped off the E. It has a storied history that begins with a humble cocoa bean. This magical ingredient is fermented, roasted and ground until it forms a liquid cocoa mass. From this mass, the fat known as cocoa butter is extracted, resulting in a delightful mixture of cocoa mass, cocoa butter and sugar often enhanced with spices, vanilla, or even vegetable fats. The flavor profiles of chocolate are incredibly diverse, ranging from intensely dark bitter chocolate to the creamy sweetness of milk chocolate, with countless variations in between. The origins of chocolate trace back to a spicy Mexican and Central American drink, which was cherished by ancient civilizations for its invigorating properties. This drink was typically made from crushed cacao beans, mixed with water, spices, and sometimes honey. The Industrial Revolution brought about significant changes, transforming chocolate into solid forms, both darker and milk varieties that would be savoured worldwide, alongside the beloved hot chocolate drinks. Cocoa beans have been cultivated in the Amazon basin for more than 3,500 years, with evidence of their use dating back to between 1100 and 1400 BC. The ancient Mayans believed that chocolate was a divine gift, attributing its discovery to the gods. They associated the coca tree with fertility and regarded it as a luxury product, often using it in religious ceremonies and important rituals. For many centuries, the coca trees remained a well-kept secret outside of Central and South America. It wasn't until 1494 that Christopher Columbus first encountered coca beans, having been gifted them by indigenous people during his voyages. Unfortunately, Columbus reportedly threw the beans overboard instead of feeding them to his goats, not realising their potential. Eight years later, on the island of Guanaja, he discovered that coca beans could be made into a delicious drink, which would soon become popular among European aristocrats. Initially, Spanish settlers were indifferent to chocolate until they learned from nuns how to sweeten it with honey, cane sugar, musk and orange blossom water. This transformation made chocolate a delightful, bitter and spicy drink as a far cry from its original form. The drink became associated with luxury and was often enjoyed during social gatherings amongst the elite. When Spanish forces conquered the Aztec territories, they began to import coca beans to Europe, life igniting a chocolate craze among the Spanish elite. 
By 1606, Italian merchant Francesco Caletti travelled to the West Indies and Spain, where he discovered chocolate and introduced it to Italy. And then between 1600 and 1650, chocolate made its way into Germany, Switzerland, Belgium and France. France's introduction to chocolate is often attributed to the marriage of Anne of Austria, daughter of King Philip III of Spain, to King Louis XIII in France in 1615. The wedding celebrations likely featured chocolate, but it took time for this delicacy to catch on in other parts of France. The addition of espelette spice initially made chocolates less appealing to some French palates. But as chefs began experimenting with various flavours, chocolate quickly gained popularity amongst the royals. It was Louis XIV and his wife, Marie Therese of Austria, who solidified chocolate's place at the Palace of Versailles. Marie Therese enjoyed prepared Spanish chocolate made by her maids, which was a more coffee-like drink served only at the king's court. This unique preparation elevated chocolate's status, making it a symbol of luxury and refinement. Royal doctors at the time praised its health benefits, further entrenching chocolate in the royal lifestyle. They believe that chocolate provided energy and vitality, often recommending it as a remedy for various ailments. The first chocolatier is believed to be David Shalom, who in 1659 incorporated chocolate into cakes and biscuits. David was the valet of the Count of Soissons and an officer to the Queen. He was granted a monopoly on chocolate making in France by Cardinal Mazarin. This privilege lasted for 29 years and he opened his shop near Léal in Paris. Chalot's pioneering efforts marked the beginning of France's love affair with chocolate, leading to what many referred to as the chocolate madness. His innovative spirit encouraged other confectioners to explore chocolate's culinary potential, paving the way for future generations of chocolatiers. During the reign of Louis XV, chocolate began to be mass-produced. The introduction of machines for chocolate production meant that chocolate that was once a luxury for the court and the bourgeois became accessible for the wider public. This democratisation of chocolate opened the door for many culinary innovations, including new ways of preparing and consuming this delightful treat. It was during this period that chocolate shops began to emerge in cities, providing the public with a taste of luxury. The influential letter writer, the Marquis de Seven, once remarked, chocolate flatters you for a while, and then it suddenly turns into a continuous fever. Encapsulating the allure and complexities of this delightful treat, her observation highlights the seductive nature of chocolate, which continues to captivate palates to this day. Definitely mine. In 1770, when Marie Antoinette married Louis XVI, she appointed her own chocolatier to the court of Versailles, becoming the first official chocolatier in France. Marie Antoinette's fondness for chocolate reminded her of her childhood in Vienna, further solidifying chocolate status in the French court. She was known to host lavish chocolate parties, where the finest chocolates were served, showcasing the craftsmanship of the chocolatier and the luxurious ingredients used. Marie Antoinette's love of chocolate did not just stop at consumption. She was also instrumental in popularising various forms of chocolate. It is said that she introduced chocolate mousse to the French court, a dish that has since become a classic in French cuisine. These gatherings, often extravagant and sumptuous, helped establish chocolate as a central element of French social life, elevating its status to a symbol of pleasure and indulgence. In the early 1800s, Sapiste de Boivre, the pharmacist of King Louis XVI, combined his knowledge of chocolate with gourmet techniques to establish his own chocolate house. As the son of a doctor, de Boivre had a keen interest in the health benefits of coca. Knowing of Marie Antoinette's affection for the chocolate, it he recommended it mixed with almond milk to remedy her headaches. This blend became popular among the French aristocracy, reinforcing the chocolate's reputation as, as both a luxury product and a health food. Sapice later became the chocolatier to Napoleon Bonaparte, developing recipes like 
Croquemont, chocolate-covered dried fruits, inspired by conversations with Napoleon and renowned chef Antoine-Marie Carême. Antoine-Marie Carême, as I've mentioned in an episode I've done, the story of Antoine-Marie Carême, was one of the first celebrity chefs. He also had a significant impact on the world of chocolate and desserts. His grand pastry designs and elaborate presentations transformed chocolate from a simple treat into an artistic experience. He famously said, to eat is a necessity, but to eat intelligently is an art. Reflecting the meticulous nature of French cuisine, Carême's intricate chocolate sculptures, often displayed at grand banquets, showcased the versatility of chocolate and further solidified its status in high society. Are you a part of the fabulously delicious Substack newsletter community yet? If not, you're missing out on a treasure trove of fabulous content about French food and life here in France. By signing up, you'll receive exclusive offers and insights tailored just for the Entrepreneur Fabulously community. Don't wait any longer to join the fun. Sign up now by the link in the show notes of this episode or head over to andrewpriorfabulously.com. Let's dive into the delicious world of French food together. Planning a trip to Paris, handing to France, or maybe you're one of the lucky ones that already live in Paris. Well, I've been fortunate to call Paris home. And let's be honest, I've eaten my way through the city for you. I, so I wanted to bring all that delicious experience to you, my fabulously delicious audience. Because if you're tuning in, I'm pretty much guessing that you love French food. That's why I wrote my first book, Paris, A Fabulous Food Guide to the World's Most Delicious City. Inside, you'll find 379 hand-picked recommendations from 17 of the best boulangeries, 28 cosy cafes, 11 indulgent chocolate shops, 13 exceptional fromageries, and 172 must-visit restaurants. I've even included food streets, gourmet supply stores, wine bars, and so much more. This is a 2024 edition with an up-to-date recommendations, perfect for your next trip to Paris or a guide for you if you're lucky enough to live there. You can grab your copy on andrewpriorfabulously.com where I even offer a signed and gift package version or you can find it on Amazon and there's a Kindle version so that you can have immediate access. Happy eating and bon voyage. The 19th century marked the rise of chocolate factories across Europe, particularly in Switzerland, the Netherlands and England. However, in 1836, a pivotal moment in French chocolate history occurred when Meneur, a French chocolatier, created the concept of the chocolate bar. Innovatively, wrapping six semi-cylindrical bars in paper. This invention revolutionised the way chocolate was consumed, making it more portable and accessible. The Monero family also ventured into cocoa bean cultivation in Nicaragua, a significant cocoa bean production country. They shipped beans to their newly established production plant in Noisiel on the Seine Marne, drastically reducing chocolate manufacturing costs and ultimately making it the largest factory in France and the first chocolate factory in the world. This factory became a symbol of industrialization in France, allowing chocolate to be juiced on a much larger scale and further solidifying its place in French culture. In the late 19th century, a serendipitous accident led to the creation of Ganache, a Parisian apprentice chocolatier mistakenly mixed hot cream into a container of melted chocolate, resulting in a new melting texture. The term Ganache is said to have originated from the prep from the apprentice's nickname, Panache. This innovation paved the way for the creation of truffles, filled with chocolate ganache, further enriching the French chocolate repertoire. The creation of ganache is often credited as a turning point in French pastry, leading to some of the exquisite desserts we enjoy today. By the late 19th and early 20th centuries, chocolate was firmly established as a staple in French cuisine. The rise of patisseries and chocolatiers in cities like Paris showcased an incredible variety of chocolate-based confections.
The artistry of French chocolatiers became renowned worldwide, with each region in France developing its own unique specialties and styles. Mendiance, chocolate discs topped with various nuts and fruits, often enjoyed during the Christmas season in Provence. This day reflected the French inclination of celebrating chocolate not only as a delicacy, but also as a cherished part of cultural traditions. The beloved chocolate eclair, filled with rich chocolate cream and topped with a chocolate glaze, is another classic that has its roots in French patisserie tradition. The name eclair actually derives from the French word for lighting, referring to the shiny glaze that adorns the patisseries. Chocolate eclairs are often served at celebratory events, symbolising joy and indulgence. Also, Canel de Bordeaux, small cylindrical cakes with a caramelised crust and soft crusted-like centre, are sometimes infused with chocolate, showcasing the adaptability of the chocolate in various forms. The rise of high-end chocolatiers in the 20th century transformed the chocolate landscape in France. Chocolatiers like Pierre Hermé, known for his inventive flavour combinations, and Jean-Paul Hembium, celebrated for his artisanal approach, have elevated chocolate to a art form. Their boutiques offer a stunning array of chocolates, pralines and patisseries, showcasing the remarkable craftsmanship that defines French chocolate making today. In recent years, the chocolate scene in France has evolved to include an increasing focus on ethical sourcing and sustainability. Many chocolatiers are now sourcing their cocoa beans from small-scale farmers who prioritise environmental stewardship and fair trade practices. This shift reflects a growing awareness amongst consumers about the impact of chocolate production on the environment and local communities. Furthermore, the rise of vegan and health-conscious alternatives has led to the development of plant-based chocolates and low-sugar options, catering to diverse dietary requirements. This evolution emphasises that chocolate is not merely a guilty pleasure, it can also be enjoyed responsibly and mindfully. The incorporation of superfoods such as matcha and turmeric into chocolate products highlights a trend towards innovative flavour profiles and health-conscious choices very much different to the times of the King Louis. As we celebrate the start of Salon de Chocolat, the largest chocolate expo in Europe, it's worth reflecting on the cultural significance of this event in France. This annual event held in Paris attracts chocolate lovers and industry professionals from around the globe. Exhibitors showcase their latest creations and visitors can participate in tastings, workshops and demonstrations by world-renowned chocolatiers. The Expo is not only a celebration of chocolate, but also an opportunity for chocolatiers to network and share their passions for this beloved ingredient. In conclusion, chocolate in France is more than just a sweet treat. It's a reflection of history, culture and artistry. From its ancient origins to its current status as a culinary masterpiece, chocolate has played a significant role in shaping French gastronomy. As we explore the flavours and creations that chocolate has to offer, we celebrate not only the indulgence it brings, but also the stories, traditions and innovations that make French chocolate a true delight for the senses. The chocolate journey continues to evolve, ensuring that each bite is not only a taste of luxury, but also a glimpse into the rich tapestry of French culinary culture. Pablo Picasso, the Spanish painter who spent much of his life here in France, said about chocolate, If I had a flower for every time I thought of you, I would walk, I could walk through my garden forever. But if I had a chocolate, I wouldn't think about anything else. And Jean Brion Savaron, French lawyer and gastron, who I've also done a story of episode on, said about chocolate, chocolate is the only food that has an effect on the brain similar to that of a drug. It is a delightful substance that awakens the senses and brings pleasure. Join me for a delightful cooking adventure right here in Montmorillon. You'll stay in our charming townhouse in the heart of town and then, when it's time, roll up your sleeves and come cook with me here in my home kitchen. Enjoy an authentic French food experience that'll tantalise your taste buds and create lasting memories. Ready to savour the flavours of France? Then check out entreprisefabulously.com for more information at my VN residencies. Can't wait to welcome you.
I'm thrilled to share that the fabulously delicious is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network. You can discover a treasure trove of fabulous podcasts covering everything from history and news to pop culture. If you're a fellow Francophile, you'll find plenty of shows to ignite your passions for all things French. Dive into the world of podcasts at evergreenpodcast.com and explore the incredible content waiting for you. Join us in celebrating the stories and ideas that inspire. That's it for another episode of Season 4 of Fabulously Delicious. What's the most fabulous thing you learned from today's episode? Let me know by contacting me via Instagram. Slide into my DMs at Andrew Pryor Fabulously. Or you can email me on contact at andrewpryorfabulously.com. I love to chat with you all. We could just have a chat about chocolate if you want, whilst eating some maybe. I love talking to people about food and especially French food. Thank you for listening. And remember, you know what my motto is. Whatever you do, do it fabulously. Merci beaucoup and bon appétit.